Okay, I'm back. Y'all are probably going to call me Sid, like the little boy on Toy Story who keeps uh, taking apart all those toys and mixing up the parts. I'm still customizing my machine. I really love this machine just the way it was when I first printed it, but there were a few things on my wish list. Like, I'm still working on this yarn carrier, um, and I'll make a video on that later. But if you don't have a tension mask, like I'm using um, one from one of my flatbed knitting machines, I printed up a bracket to attach it to my table, and I have a video on that. But if you don't want to spend any more money on this machine, um, buying a tension mask or anything like that, the thing that I'm fixing to show you is going to help you to tension your yarn and keep it at a consistent tension. Um, these you can buy on um, eBay for about $35 plus shipping, so um, they're not that expensive. So if you were going to really do a lot of um, socks and stuff, this will take care of the uh, the heel spring part of it where it takes up the slack for you. But um, the little gadget that I've got here is going to help you with tension if you... Um, don't mind uh, when you're doing your socks just tensioning or uh, pulling up the slack with your hands. So um, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit more later, but what I've got is just a little um, scarf loom, or I don't know what it's called. It came from Michael's. It wasn't very expensive, probably less than $5. And I um, stuck it to a little block of wood with some double-sided tape. I wanted to raise it up so it would be a little bit more level with my um, yarn carrier over here. And then I've got that block of wood uh, stuck down to my table with double-sided tape. So I got this idea from you know, really several places, but um, years ago I knew a woman who loved to crochet, but she was crippled from an early age with arthritis and her hands were really twisted. But she um, rigged up a fat crochet hook that she could grip in her right hand, but she couldn't hold the yarn with her left hand to get the tension she wanted. So someone rigged up a pillow that she could put in her lap, and it had a board on the top, and they had a series of pegs uh, nailed into the board where she could customize where she uh, wanted to wrap her yarn to get the tension that she wanted. So, and this kind of system is also used with uh, certain ways to warp a weaving loom where there's pegs that you run your yarn in and out of. So I found this little uh, loom that I already had. And so um, what would be nice is, um, I'm not sure if I have all of this in the video, is if there would be a little ring on the end that I could run my yarn through. I, I could run it up through the bottom and that would work pretty good. But I've got my yarn on the floor. I normally have it up up in my tension mast here, but if you don't have one of those, and I just kind of anchor it on one of the first pegs here. And you're going to get a little bit of tension from that, but it's still very loose. So if I want to add tension, I can just go diagonally across to the other side and bring the yarn back to the middle, and that'll give me a little bit more tension. And then I keep adding pegs until... Um, and I'm testing it out on my knitting machine and I keep knitting until I get the perfect tension. So for me, I've found this fourth peg is probably the best. But I'm going to take this back off and then I'm going to zoom in on my knitting machine so that you can see the difference in the stitches. I thought I'd zoom in on this first before I show the, the stitches on the knitting machine. I've got to put this paper behind it so that you can see it better. But my cone of yarn is on the floor and I just anchor it on one of these first pegs here. And that gives you a little bit of attention, but like I'm going to show, is it's really still really loose. So my first peg that I try, usually I go back and forth diagonally. You can do whatever you want to but I um, always like the yarn to come back out through the middle. So I added that peg, and that's still really loose, probably. Then you can add another peg and another, and just keep going back and forth until you get the tension you want. You can actually try for, um, and I've done this, you can get even more minute changes by going in and out in a straight line and then going across. So there's all kinds of things that you can try and then you can um, keep a record of which one 
works for the project that you're doing. So, and you'll get a consistent tension every time if you use the same pegs. So I just, okay, you can see where I've already been playing with this and all the different tensions that I got uh, using this little peg loom. So let me go to the first peg across the way, actually the second peg on the other side of the uh, initial peg. And you need to go a couple of rounds, but I can already see that that's way too long because the stitches are dropping down below the edge of my cylinder. If you're trying to print a lacy scarf, that would be perfect. But I'm not holding the yarn at all with my left hand, so I'm getting the same tension. As long as my yarn is feeding from the cone, um, like it should, straight into the little uh, knitting loom, um, you should get the same tension throughout. Now, if you're holding this with your hands and trying to keep a consistent tension, you're never going to be able to be uh, precise with that. So I'm going to add another peg diagonally, the third peg on the, the side that's closest to me. And really, you, you need to knit a couple of rounds to really get an idea. And you can see these are getting a little bit higher up on the edge of the cylinder. But they're still really loose. You can see the space here compared to the space before. So I'm going to go one more peg. And I went on the right on the uh, four side this time. And you can see it's tightened it up even more. And that to me would probably be perfect because the, the bar of that stitch is laying right on top of the cylinder. I'm going to add one more peg. But as I pull on this yarn, I can tell that's quite a bit of tension, so. And, and it's starting to ride up on the needles, so that's an indication to me that that's too tight. If, if it doesn't want to slip down to the base of the needle, it's too tight. So I know I have to back off. Now, with this system, this means that you don't have to mess with your cams anymore. You can set your cams to an optimal um, height for this machine to run smoothly. Uh, mine's probably about in the middle, and I never, I never mess with these anymore. I've got them set. I use my tension mast for my uh, knitting machine, and um, I don't have to, to mess with these. So this little loom would be a solution to that for you to never have to change these. And you also don't have to hold on to the yarn. So I hope this helps someone who uh, wants to make it a little bit easier to knit on this machine. And I'll be back with a, um, another video soon to show my final, well, no, nothing's final with this machine. Uh, I love messing with it, but um, I, I think I'm pretty close to getting it customized the way I want it. But this is a little pigtail coil that I made to um, to guide my yarn. So I'll try to come back with another video soon on uh, what I consider to be my final yarn carrier. So I hope these videos are helping, and I thank you for watching.